Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel for another Moving to New Zealand themed Q&A video. If you've found this video because you're contemplating a move to New Zealand or are in the middle of making a move to New Zealand, I will link down below the entire playlist of videos that you might find helpful along with my Moving to New Zealand Facebook group which has over 3,000 members and they're all either in the process of moving to New Zealand or thinking about it or have already made the move. It's a great place to network and connect with people who are sharing the same experience as you. The usual disclaimer for this video applies. I have only moved to New Zealand once and I can only share from my own experience. I have not done things like move a pet or open a business here or anything like that. So questions like that, I'm afraid I can't answer. I get so many emails and private messages and comments asking me questions about moving to New Zealand and I've answered a whole bunch of them in previous videos like this. So I'm just gonna dive into these questions which I haven't answered before. Have you ever felt resented because you are an immigrant? No, I can't say that I personally have ever felt resented. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it's just not something that I've experienced. Are there any household items that you now wish you would have shipped that you didn't? No, because we shipped everything, and that is my advice, is just ship everything. The only things we didn't ship were our tumble dryer, our washing machine, and our vacuum cleaner. We didn't want to have to go to all of the trouble of thoroughly cleaning and disinfecting our vacuum cleaner and bring it over because it was pretty old and it could do with replacing anyway. The washing machine we needed to use right up until we left or at least right up until the packers came and we weren't confident that we could fully dry out all of the pipes and that mold wouldn't grow in it so we decided to leave that as well and tumble dryer was also pretty old and MAF doesn't like the lint and seeds and pollen and dust issues in that so again we didn't want to have to thoroughly clean it and bring it over when it was quite old so those three things we didn't bring I don't regret not bringing them and when we went to buy new we asked for a discount because we we're buying all three together and we got a discount so no the answer is I don't regret not bringing anything and I would advise just bring everything do you have any tips or advice on how I can take my husband with me on working holiday visa? I'm sorry I can't answer questions like this. If you have specific visa questions or if you have a unique situation, I can recommend getting in touch with Sarah from New Zealand Shores or anyone from New Zealand Shores. I'll leave a link to them down below. I have done a video with Sarah interviewing her and asking her lots of immigration questions that will be in the playlist that's linked down below. Okay, I get lots of questions about particular areas in New Zealand. like which areas of Queenstown should I move to or can I recommend a school in Wellington or things like that and we moved to New Zealand lived in Pukekohe when we first arrived and I now live in South Taranaki and those are the only areas that I have experience with and those are the only areas that I could really advise on which streets to avoid which schools to look for I can't advise you on any other areas in New Zealand I'm sorry you're just gonna have to find maybe a local group on Facebook and ask in there but that's not something I can help you with. Which cell phone provider is best? I know it can be daunting when you're looking at different cell phone providers and you don't know which one is the one to choose, but there is no one right answer because it depends on which area you live. When I lived up in Auckland, I used Vodafone and I had great coverage and I didn't have any problems. When we moved to South Taranaki, I didn't get any signal. I was constantly struggling with signal, so I switched to Skinny and now I have no problems whatsoever. What I would recommend is when you come over and you've got your phone, just go and buy a prepaid SIM card. I think it's like $5 and you might have to buy $20 of credit and just use it and then see which one gets the best coverage and then that's the one to stick with. So try a few different ones before you go and tell everyone your phone number, decide which one works for you and then you can tell them that's your number and that's the provider you're gonna go with. I would just factor that into your moving costs. As for which one is best in terms of cost, they're all much of a muchness. They each offer different special offers. Like I said, I use Skinny. I do pay as you go. I pay $16 a month and with that I get unlimited texts in New Zealand. I get way more minutes than I ever use on phone calls and we don't have a landline and I get a certain amount of data as well. So that suits me. How does it work when you are settled there if I want my mom to come and visit? Depending on which country your mom's coming to visit from, she might be able to just fly in and visit or she may have to get a visa. Again, I can only speak from my own experience. My dad comes over to visit from South Africa and he has to get a visa before he comes, like a visiting, a visitor's visa. 
My grandfather and grandmother has British passports. This qualifies me to apply for one. I'm doing this soon. I just want to know if this will count any points or make it easier. I've had a few questions like this asking if you have a British passport, does it make it easier to immigrate into New Zealand? And the answer is no, unfortunately not. You're just gonna have to tick all the boxes, jump through all the hoops, just like anybody else. We have British passports and that didn't make any difference when applying to live here. Where would you suggest me staying where there's work and not too expensive rent? I get a lot of questions like this as well, where to go, where to live. Unfortunately, there is no one area that I can advise you on because it depends on what work you're doing. And when you say not too expensive rent, I'd advise looking outside of Auckland and outside of Wellington and then just see where your work is and if you can handle the rent in your budget. Is it easy to find a place to rent if you bring your animals with? The short answer is no. I wouldn't say it's easy. The longer answer is it's going to create a bit of complication but it's not going to be impossible and if you just mention and ask about a pet and describe your pet situation when applying for houses even if they say no pets you may get lucky especially if it's for rent by owner and there isn't an agency involved. We were renting through an agency and we wanted to get chickens and so we approached the agency to approach the landlord and ask if we could have chickens. This was up in Auckland and he said yes. And then later we got a dog and we approached them again and asked could we have a dog? And they said yes, so long as the dog is an outside dog and we had to sign an extra page on the contract and I think we had to pay extra deposit. I'm not sure about that. It's always worth asking, especially if you have an outside dog or a pet that's not, like if you have five big dogs that are indoor dogs as a landlord, you're not gonna be interested really. I'm sure that would be quite daunting to think of tenants coming in with that kind of a pet situation. But if you have a rabbit who lives in a hutch in the garden, or if you have a cat, cats kind of come and go, they may be more open to it. So I would just ask, I would spell out the situation with your pet, try and ensure that your pet is as low impact as possible on the property and it's worth a try and you will find some places, it's not impossible. If you are not yet on a permanent residency visa, is the public schooling system around the same cost as it is in South Africa? I don't know what the schooling costs are in South Africa currently, we left before we had children, we left South Africa in 1999. If you're new here, we moved to England then and we moved from England to New Zealand in 2011. The schooling costs here are donations, so you don't actually have to pay them by law, they are considered donations and they vary from school to school, but your school's donation will be your school's donation, as far as I know. Again, we can only speak of our own experience and we came over on residency visas. My friends who came over on work visas or other temporary visas before they applied for residency, as far as I know, also just paid the same school donation fee. So I don't think you have to pay any extra, but I can't actually answer that for sure. I'd be interested to know what the stay-at-home mom culture is like in New Zealand. Do most women work or stay home or is it pretty evenly split? In my experience, it's pretty evenly split. I know women who go out to work, I know women who work from home, and I know women who are just in the home with their children and don't have any kind of employment. And I've never felt any kind of discrimination. I, I don't think it's a big deal here. Some women go out to work and some women don't, and it's pretty normal here to do either. How long will a visa take? How long is a piece of string? Depends on your visa, depends on how well you filled out your forms and collected all of your information that you need to submit. It depends on how long your medicals take to come back. It depends on so many things that I can't possibly give you one answer on how long a visa will take. Can I email you with my special circumstances for advice? A variation on this question is receiving messages or emails with pretty much a life story and then at the end of it asking for advice or asking for help. Like I said before, I can't give advice. I'm not qualified to. I'm not legally allowed to. So all I can do is share my experience and refer you on to somebody who's more qualified than I. If you're wondering why I'm pushing New Zealand Shores, it's because that is an agency that I know is reputable and legit and super helpful and they wonderful people to deal with. I'm sure there are other agencies like that. I just am not personally familiar with them. So I wouldn't be able to advise you on any agency other than New Zealand Shores. But I'm sorry, I can't answer any of your immigration questions or your visa questions or your special circumstances questions. I'm just a regular person and that's just not in my realm. 
I do hope that you have found this video somewhat helpful anyway and like I said I will link the playlist down below I have other Q&A videos I have an interview with an immigration agent I have other videos coming I have some immigrant interviews in there and I would recommend subscribing to my channel if you don't want to miss any future moving to New Zealand related videos because I have some really cool ones planned and they'll be coming soon all the best with your journey I wish you all the luck in the world we absolutely love it here and I'm sure you will too thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one